the Lord. Amen. Lord. Amen. Praise God. We got to talk about it. We talked about the covenant of peace not too long ago. And today I want to talk about another covenant. Covenant of increase and favor. Let's look at Deuteronomy, the seventh chapter. Deuteronomy 7, verse 9. Our covenant of increase and favor. And it reads, Know therefore that the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God, which keeps covenant and mercy with them who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. God is faithful. He has remained true to all of his covenant promises. Everything that he promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he has fulfilled those promises and is fulfilling those promises. Amen? Amen. God can't lie. If he said it, he'll do it. He is trustworthy. If he made a covenant, he will not break it. Let's look at Psalm 89. Psalm 89, verse 34. God is trustworthy. If you can't depend on anything or anybody else, you can trust and depend and lean confidently on God. Amen? Amen. Psalm 89, 34. And it reads, my covenant I will not break, nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. See, sometimes people change and sometimes people become unfaithful to God, but God is not like that. He's not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Amen? <laughs> but God said that he'll bring it to pass. He will always remain faithful to his promises. And because we're in Christ Jesus, all the promises that he made are yes and amen to us. Right. We like to say that we're blessed and highly favored because we are. Right. And we can say about ourselves what God says about us. Amen? Mm -hmm. As believers, we have a covenant of abundance, increase, and favor with God through Jesus Christ. Our part of the covenant is to keep God commandments, especially his commandment to walk in love. When we do what the word says, we will have increase in favor in our lives. We just have to obey the word. God made a covenant with Abraham to prosper him, and because we are Abraham's seed, if any man be in Christ, then are they Abraham's seed. Because we are Abraham's seed, we are heirs to the promises of God. Let's look at Genesis, the 12th chapter. Genesis 12. And we're going to look at the first two verses. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Genesis 12, 1 and 2. Now the Lord has said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. See, can you see how God is trying to bless us? God told Abraham to separate himself from three things. His country, his kinfolk, his kinfolk, his kinfolk and his father's house. God promised to uh, bless Abraham, but he had one condition. Abraham had to do what the Lord told him to do. See, when God wants to show you something, uh, when he wants to show you his will and purposes for your life, sometimes he has to get you away from the things that you're familiar with. Sometimes he has to move you out of your comfort zone. Why? So that you can hear his instructions. So that you won't be listening to mom and them, or what somebody else is saying, or, or what some person on television is saying, so that you can hear him. So he'll move you out of that comfort zone. He'll get you away from your familiar surroundings. Amen? Amen. This is what he did for Abraham. This is the beginning of Abraham's journey of faith, his trusting in God. Abraham didn't understand all of where he was going. He didn't understand, he didn't know what he was going to do. When he got there, he just simply trusted God, and he moved by faith. Amen. And that's what we have to do, live by faith. God made a covenant of increase and favor with Abraham. He promised to bless Abraham and his children. Now, the word bless means to increase. It also means to be happy. It means to be fortunate. It means to be empowered to prosper. 
And we're all a blessed people, amen? amen? Now these two verses in the Amplified say, Now in Haran, the Lord said to Abram, Go for yourself. I like that. Go for yourself. <laughs> for your own advantage, away from your country, from your relatives and your father's house, to the land that I will show you, and I will make of you a great nation. And that's what Israel is today that he's talking about. And I will bless you with abundant increase of faith. See, increase alone is good enough. But he said abundance, increase of favor, and make your name famous and distinguished, and you will be a blessing, listen to this, dispensing good to others. How awesome that is to be able to dispense good to others, to be able to meet the needs of other people, to be able to help somebody pay their mortgage or their rent, to be able to bless somebody. Amen? God said he would bless him to be able to dispense good to others. Glory be to God. Genesis 12 and 3 says, And I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. And in you shall all the nations of earth be blessed. What an awesome promise. As heirs to the promises of Abraham, we have a right to this covenant increase and favor this covenant of increase and favor. And we should confess that on a regular basis. Amen. We should say that we have increase and favor in our lives. God said in Psalms 115, 14, that he will increase us and our children. Psalm 5 and 12 says, The favor of God surrounds you like a shield. Amen? Therefore, his favor and increase belong to us. And you should confess it. This is why our faith should be in God no matter what's going on in the world, amen? Because the world is in a bad place right now and it's going to get a whole lot worse. But we are in covenant with the almighty, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent God of the universe. Amen? amen? And it doesn't get any better than this. You don't have to go around looking for something better. It doesn't get any better than knowing Him. Amen. But we have to uphold our part of the covenant by keeping God's commands and obeying his word. Let's look at Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter. Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, we're going to look at verses 1 through 3. Praise God. Praise Are you happy to be in the house this morning? Amen. I know I am. Amen. We should be in his presence. Well, we are in his presence, but we should acknowledge his presence every day. All during the day. Hallelujah. Amen. Deuteronomy right. mm-hmm. 6 chapter verses 1 through 3. Now this is the commandment, and these are the statutes and judgments which the Lord your God has commanded to teach you, that you may observe them in the land which you are crossing over to possess. That you may fear the Lord your God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command you you and your son and your grandson all the days of your life and that your days may be prolonged. Therefore hear, O Israel, and be careful to observe it, that it may be well with you and that you might multiply greatly as the Lord God of your fathers has promised you a land flowing with milk and honey. What a blessing. Israel's prosperity depended on them understanding and obeying God's commandments. And we have to obey God too if we want to walk in victory. Amen? Amen. You've got to be obedient. 